If you're interested in making a detailed platformer just like this one, within Game Maker, using drag and drop, then keep watching. Good day, gamers. If you've been following along, your game is coming along really well. We have an enemy, but we have no way for the player to interact with the enemy yet. So let's give the player the ability to jump on the enemy's head and deal damage to them. So when you have two objects that you need an interaction with, you can create a collision event between them. So let's go to the player and let's create a collision event between the player and the enemy. So the first thing I want to do is drag in an if statement. And I want to make sure that the enemy is not already dead because we don't want any interaction if the enemy is already dead. So we need to check the state of the enemy and make sure it's not in a dead state. So if I write state here, this variable that it's checking is the state variable of the object that is running it, which is the player. But I want to check the state of the enemy. And when you're in a collision event, to check the other instances variables, you can use the word other. So I'm going to say other.state, and that refers to the enemy's state variable. So if we look at the state variable, the enemy, and if it is not equal to the dead state, and we haven't created this as yet, and it's going to be enemy state, so es.dead. So if the enemy is not dead, then we want to have some sort of interaction with the player. So let's have another check here. Let's go and have a look quickly at the enemy. So here's the current mask for the enemy. Now we want to be able to jump on the enemy's head to deal damage. So we need to look at, say, this section above and say if the player has interacted with this section up here, well then the player has jumped on the enemy's head. So the limits of the mask all the way around the outside are called the B box values. So this is B box top, B box right, B box bottom, and B box left. And we can refer to these to know if the player's landed up the top up here. So let's go back to the player and let's look at the variable of the player, the B box bottom. And if the player's B box bottom, if that is greater than the enemy's B box top, so other.b box top, let's say plus 10. So other B box top plus 10. So if we go back to the enemy, this is the B box top, and we're doing plus 10. And when we plus, we actually go down in Game Maker. So plus 10 is about down here somewhere. So if the player's B box bottom is anywhere above this line, well then we interacted with the enemy's head. So back again to player. So if that's true, that means the player did interact with the enemy's head, but we also want to make sure that the player is moving down. So they're actually falling on the enemy's head and not just going upwards. So how do we know if we're going down? Well, our VSP is going to be greater than zero. Now, if that's the case, we're actually hitting the enemy in the head. Let's set our VSP, I'm going to close this down. We'll set our VSP to be minus jump speed. So we'll actually get a jump and bounce off the enemy. So that's the player sorted. Now what do we need to do to the enemy if this happens? Let's go up a little bit. Well first we need to change them into the dead state. And when they're in the dead state they're going to play this animation which is of them dying. So one of the first things we do is we need to put them back to their first image index so that they can play the animation correctly. Because when you change states, it doesn't reset the image index. We've got to do that ourselves. So let's assign an instance variable and we want to change the image index and we'll put it back to zero. And we also want to make sure they're not walking anymore because we want them to stop and then fall over. So let's also assign the HSP to be zero as well. Now the last thing we need to do is we need to change their state. We need to put them into that dead state. So let's change their state variable to enemy state dot dead. So these three changes are all related to the enemy. They're not related to the player. And as I've got them there now, they will all change the player's variables because we're not using other. I didn't use other. And the reason I didn't use other is I wanted to show you something else you can use. So if we go here, there's a apply to code block. 
We're going to drag it over and just put it below the VSP assign. And what you can do with this is apply multiple changes to one, another instance. So if we change it here and say it applies to other, and then we drag all of these under, those changes now will happen for the other, which is the enemy. So it's really handy so you don't have to use multiple others. You can just do an apply to, and it applies to the other for everything here. All right, so let's go and create this dead state for the enemy. So let's go to the enemy and let's go to uh, their step event. Now at the moment we only have one case for our state and that's uh, enemy state dot walk. So let's create another case. And this one's going to be enemy state dot dead. Now what do we want to do in this state? Well what's going to happen is we're changing to this and when we press play the enemy's falling down. But what happens is they will fall down and then they will get back up and they'll fall down and the animation will continue to play. So we need a way to make sure that the animation stops after it plays once. So let's have a look firstly at the image index. So we need to monitor the image index value. And when it is equal to the final image index for that sprite, then we need to stop our image speed so that it stops animating. So let's look at our image index and we need to know when it's greater than the final image index value. Now another variable you can use is image underscore number and that is the number of images in the sprite. Now image number will always be one more than how many sub images you have in your sprite. So if your sprite has three sub images or frames their image index values are 0, 1, and 2. But we have three images in total, and image number will be equal to 3. So because it's one more, if our image index is greater than image number minus 1, then we are on the last frame. So we're on the final frame of that animation. And if that's the case, what we want to do is set our image speed to be 0. And image speed is the speed our animation is playing. So setting it to zero means it stops playing. Now we still need to have our collision check and our animation check because we're moving into the dead state and we need to know which sprite to use. So I'm going to take this one and this one, which is the collision and the animation. I'm going to copy those and I'm going to paste them down below the if. So they don't have to happen if the if happens. They happen all the time. Now the last thing to do is for our animation for the enemy, we actually don't have a state for dead. So let's go to our scripts. Let's go to our animation enemy. And let's add a case for ES dead. So enemy state dot dead. And all we want to do is assign the instance variable for sprite. And we want to assign it to our SPR underscore dead, which is just our dead sprite. Now we're also checking facing, which we still want to keep doing. So I'm going to copy and paste that as well. We want to make sure we're checking the facing direction so that we can die on the correct orientation. And we're going to test the game now. So firstly, we want to make sure when we interact with them, nothing happens. Great. It's only when we jump on their head. So what about if we jump underneath them? That doesn't happen either because our VSP is not greater than zero. So let's jump on their head and they get affected then. So same for this guy. When we are not interacting with them from the top, nothing actually happens. So we don't take any damage or anything at the moment, but when we hit them from the top, they fall down and their animation stops. That's looking great. Now, if there are other things you want to see in drag and drop, please leave a comment down below. Make sure you like and subscribe because it helps me to make content like this. Now over in my Game Maker course on Udemy, I add a sword and a shield and the player has a lot more interaction with the enemies. The course is currently the highest rated Game Maker 2 course on Udemy. If that's something you're interested in, check out the coupon code down in the description. You get over 90% off from the course. Thanks for joining me. I'll talk to you next time.